Hello and welcome to the next part of the CPFT video series, Coping with Worry, Anxiety and Depression. This is Episode 6, Managing Your Sleep, Part 2, Routines and Sleep Hygiene. My name is Michelle Espley and I'm a Cognitive Behavioural Therapist and Service Manager of the CPFT Psychological Wellbeing Service. Having a routine and making small changes can have a big impact on our ability to sleep well. This video will look at the importance of having routines so our bodies can learn that it is time for sleep and also consider a range of factors collectively known as sleep hygiene that ensure we are physically in the right state and that our environment is conducive to sleep. Making some small changes can give us the best chance of getting a good night's sleep. We'll start with routines. To help you overcome sleep difficulties, having a regular bedtime and waking up time will help your body know when it is time to sleep and time to get up. This unfortunately covers a regular routine for every night, including weekends, particularly whilst you're in the process of trying to improve your sleep. Your body and mind need to be prepared for sleep gradually. It is helpful to develop a wind down routine which starts one to one and a half hours before bedtime. Your routine should involve slowing down or stopping any activities you're involved in and starting your pre-bed routine such as cleaning your teeth, putting your pyjamas on and locking up. It is helpful to engage in relaxing activities at this time such as having a warm bath, reading watching TV, having a light snack and a decaffeinated drink, anything which helps you relax. It could be that you decide to have a warm shower and then a hot chocolate, read a book and then dim the lights and engage in a relaxation exercise such as those explored in episode 2 of this series. But this is just an example and only you will know what is the best bedtime routine for you. It can be helpful to write your new bedtime routine down until it becomes more familiar to you so you can stick to the same routine every night. Finally, if you are laying in bed unable to sleep for more than 15 minutes when you try to go to sleep or when you wake up in the night, get up and go to another room. Do something relaxing like reading a book or having a light snack until you feel sleepy before returning to bed. It can be helpful to have a list of things you can do in this situation pre-planned and written down within your sleep plan. If you can't sleep again when you return to bed after 15 minutes, then get up again and repeat this process. This process helps to link your bed with sleepiness. Next, sleep hygiene. Some habits and our environment can affect our ability to sleep. The factors outlined in this diagram can help improve our sleep. Have a quick look through and check if any of these apply to you. Diet and exercise play an important role in how well we sleep. Hunger can cause wakefulness and so a light snack before bedtime can aid sleep. On the other hand though, going to bed just after eating a large meal can also keep you awake. Eating a healthy balanced diet at regular times during the day will stop you feeling hungry at night time. Regular exercise improves the quality of our sleep too. Aim to gently exercise for 20 to 30 minutes every day. Exercise though wakes you up, so avoid having any strenuous exercise just before bedtime. Caffeine, alcohol and nicotine can also impact upon our sleep. Caffeine keeps you awake. It is in tea, coffee, coke and some medicines for headaches, colds and weight loss. Aim not to have any caffeine for four to six hours before you go to bed. If you currently consume a large amount of caffeine, reduce this slowly. Alcohol disrupts your sleep and also affects the quality of your sleep. It can make you thirsty and also more likely to go to the toilet in the night 
and so your sleep becomes more broken. Aim to avoid drinking alcohol for four hours before bedtime. Nicotine in cigarettes or vapes can wake you up. If you smoke or vape, try to cut down in the evening before you go to bed and at night time. If you want to give up smoking, your doctor will be able to give you more information about support available. As well as our habits, our environment can have a big impact upon our sleep. Light is really important for sleep as it tells our internal body clock when to feel sleepy and when to feel awake. For our internal body clock to work, we need lots of daylight in the morning and during the day and low level light in the evening and darkness at night. Also, try to ensure that both you and your room are an appropriate temperature to help you sleep. We all know that we've had sleepless nights on those hot summer nights where we felt all sticky and uncomfortable. If you can do anything to reduce the temperature in your room at those times, it can be really helpful. Noise can also impact our ability to sleep. If your room is noisy from the street or noisy neighbours, you could try using earplugs to block out some of the sounds. However, for some people, earplugs make you focus on your own inner sounds, such as breathing and your heartbeat. And if this is the case for you, this strategy isn't for you. Instead, you could try listening to white noise or nature sounds. Now it is time to start to put this all into practice. You will need to experiment with what works best for you. To help improve your sleep, it might be necessary to change some of your current habits or behaviours. And these changes can be difficult to make. It could be helpful to think about the pros and cons of changing these habits in order to benefit your sleep. Remember, although these are simple steps, they can have a profound impact upon your ability to sleep. However, they won't lead to immediately perfect sleep and it is important to stick with it. That brings us to the end of this part of this episode. The next part looks at managing nightmares. If you do not experience nightmares, you may wish to skip straight to part four. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful. I would like to thank all the staff who have been involved in the development of this video series from the Psychological Wellbeing Service and the Peterborough Exemplar Project for Cambridgeshire and Peterborough NHS Foundation Trust. Do subscribe to the CPFT YouTube channel to receive alerts when further videos are uploaded and check out our website for more information at www.cpft.nhs.uk.